envelopes out, you know, at the back when you leave. You can do that online or you can grab an envelope and put whatever money you want and then you put it in the basket or send it to the church. And the next thing is the um, stretch outreach training, which will be happening next Saturday. Between, uh, it starts at 8 and it will end at 12. And then there's the men's breakfast, which will be happening on the 21st of October. Um, all men are welcome. It's a, a mission which was no longer happening, but they are now resuscitating it. And then on a set note, um, I'm set to announce one of our, uh, you know, the passing of Umama Dokas in Lovu. We heard about it late during the week. Um, she's one of the Manyano ladies. Please uh, remember her, her family in your prayers as they go through this uh, difficult time. Would also like to wish those who are having their birthdays this week. Uh, one of them is Samantha. We hope you have a, a you know, a happy birthday. <laughs> and those who are, will be celebrating their anniversaries, we wish them well. Uh, before I light the candle, I'll invite um, Dr. Chris Herald to come and give us a, a small talk about the street um, outreach training. Thanks very much. Um, folk, many of you were at the, um, uh, you know, the training session yesterday that, uh, that, that Chris Harrison did, which was very, very good. Now, um, we need to put that into practice. And we're start restarting the street ministry to men on the street. And next week, um, on Saturday, we're having a training session. There's a clipboard at the back. Please put your name onto it if you want to participate. And uh, look forward to seeing you. Bless you. Bye. Now we'll say the candle prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Praise God among the communion of saints. Let the people of God rejoice in the creator. Let them praise the Lord with dance and celebrate with musical instruments because the Lord delights in them and that don't be despairing with welfare. Let all the saints jump for joy. Let them cry out with gladness where they rest. Let high praises of God be in their throats. Words and songs that overcome injustice, binding rulers in chains, and the powerful in iron shackles, bringing justice to them, and honor to all God's faithful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today we'll be led by uh, President Vusi Vilagati, and our ho opening hymn is hymn number seven. Thank you. 
Friends, you may be seated. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's gather our hearts and minds and bow them before God in prayer. Come, let us pray. O loving, generous, and ever-living God, we thank you for opportunities to come into your presence. We thank you for the glory of this day. We thank you for your grace that has raised us up even this morning and to behold the beauty of creation, to hear the birds singing, to see the wonders of flowers blooming, to hear the whispers of creation renewing itself, to see the art of your love coming forth again from the ashes of winter into the glory of new life beginning. Thank you for the opportunity to be loved and love you, to worship you and be redeemed by your love, to come and fellowship with those around us, to come to worship you with our families and friends. We thank you, Lord, for this church, your church, we thank you for its ministry, for its witness, for the friendships that we have made in this place, for the ways in which it has stood to worship you constantly, honoring your name through its fellowship and ministry and service to the world. We thank you, of oh God, for those that are present here today and those that join us through different platforms and those that are unable to be here because of particular circumstances. May our time of being in your presence Fill us with your love, uplift us, and renew us with your grace. We pray, O oh God, that you will shine your light upon us as we worship you, that your spirit will whisper into our hearts, and that your love will be fresh again for us. In the strong and the powerful name of the one that loved us and died and rose in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so we join in prayer. Come, let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom, whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love him with all your, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to heaven's law. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you that you also love one another. And so we confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that may serve you newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear then the word of grace. Our sins are forgiven. Thank you. 
We come to the time where we respond to God's love in our lives through our generosity and our giving, whether it's giving towards the normal Sunday giving, whether it's Thanksgiving, whether it's honor, whether it's just somebody saying, God is so good to me, I want to write a, a double check to God this morning. All of that is allowed this morning. So it's that moment where we are giving to God and we allow the stewards to receive our gifts to God. This way they offer to goals. Thank you. Oh, I went to the wrong side. I was trying to hide it for some reason. Thank you. So we come to the time when it is on here. It says praise and worship. That's fine. Okay, well, we have the readings now, um, and there's somebody that's been dedicated to read for us this morning. Who's reading for us? Oh, you're reading for us. Thank you. Thank you. Your name? Mandla. Thank you, Mandla. Thank you. Mandla. 
May I have water, please? As Mandela greets. Morning. Our first reading is from the book of Romans, Romans 13, verses 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there is any other commandment, and if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as you have loved yourself. Love does, not, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of law. And do this knowing the, that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Please may we stand for the gospel reading. Gospel reading is from Matthew 18, verses 15 to 20. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, take with, one, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if the two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or more are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. This is the word of the Lord. Oh Lord, my God, when I awesome wonder.
may be seated, friends. It's so nice when a song like this is sung like a Sunday morning song than a funeral song, eh? Thanks to the organist. You know, those moments when you hear, Oh, great love. Oh. You know those moments? And you can feel even the mood is way beyond somber. Greetings, friends. Um, I have been asked to come and spend the morning with you. And it is an honor and a privilege to be here. I am Vusi Bilagati, um, known to some in this community and probably not to many. To, some may not know me. But it is always a privilege and an honor to spend some time in worship. So I haven't preached in a, in a short while. So what time does the service end? I'm just asking, I'm asking, it's an honest question. What, what time does the... The next one starts at 10. Oh, it ends at 10. Okay, that means between the sermon and Holy Communion, it's 30 minutes, eh? <laughs> well, let's see, let's go, let's go. So if a preacher hasn't preached in a while, you know, you, you know almost, you know those things. They either are too short or too long, eh? I don't know where we will fall. So I, I want to draw out two parts of scripture from the two texts that we read and just say, please hold those texts um, in, front, in, in your hearts as we, as we reflect. The very first verse in Romans, and it has different versions to it. But the NIV in front of me says something like this. Let not debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. Eh? And then other versions would say, Oh, no one, nothing but love. Then the end of the text has something that reads like this. Rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think of how to gratify your self-desires. Then the Matthew text ends off with a line like this. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. You know the text? Those that know um, our liturgy, there is that one prayer, almost one of those last prayers in our liturgy that says, bless this our gathering, because we know that where two or three are gathered in your name, you have promised to be there. You remember that in our liturgies? It, is, it has become such a very liturgical and a deeply entrenched part of the understanding. So I want us to lift this text up from liturgy and bring them back into the Bible. Eh? Can we take them back into the text? And I want us to think of a number of things. And I think at the heart of this, I want you to consider... Something about the makings of a Christian community and the importance of reconciliation. Reconciliation, reconciling relationships or positive relationships. So if I were to then be asked of all of these texts, what would be, you know, those old preachers, they would say, my text for the morning is this. You would remember those? So this is my text for the moment. Where two or three are gathered in my name. Where two or three are gathered in my name. So if anything, you forget anything, when two or three are gathered in my name. Let's try and see what it means to do that. In the last um, short while, we've had a number of very difficult and painful incidents in the city, in the heart of Johannesburg. 
and one of them, it's the burning of a building. You remember that? And the dying of so many people in that moment. But one of the things that the news don't make a lot of premium about is how the people around come and become part of that journey of trying to care and respond in love and generosity and making sure that they support others in love. That very important notion of loving the neighbor. For a while, we, we can stop the politics around everything else and we can really look at the sadness and the pain and the agony and the trauma of real human beings. Although I had one former mayor saying, um, you know, something like, and, and they were on the news, by the way, saying something like, oh, this is very likely compared to the, to the catastrophe that I've always been telling them will befall this country. And I thought to myself, just after 70 plus people have been reported dead, dead somebody says, oh, this is very likely. And I thought to myself, politicians, politicians and politicians. Sometimes it's easy to love a distant neighbor, isn't it? Sometimes. It's easy when the, when the need is very public, I can clean up my cupboard and go and sponsor stuff, clean up my wardrobe and go and deliver stuff and love the neighbor because I will go in, do it, walk away. They don't have to interact with my values. They don't have to inter ir irritate me in any way. It is me loving a neighbor and a stranger that's distant right there. Isn't it? And, 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 and just after these days, that, that question about Matthew asking Jesus, oh, so, so how many times must I forgive my brother? Do you remember that? And then it's seven times, and then Jesus says, times seven. So seven, a whole 77 times. Eh? Times? No, 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 no. 70 times seven. Is it? No. Is it 49 or 70 or seven? Oh. So, 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 and, 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 and somehow, for some people, that's the, that's, the, that's the difficult part of Scripture. Hey, there are some things that are seemingly unforgivable, eh? Somebody is saying, is somebody saying yes? You know, in church? So, so, so it, sometimes forgiveness does seem like a difficult thing to deal with. For us, for those around us, never knowing when is forgiveness due and when is forgiveness right and not. So there is that. So I want to say, I think today's text does something to help us that says before we get to the second step of forgiveness. Jesus almost says there is, there is a particular process I want to invite you to. If you thought this text was about when two or three are gathered in my name, just huddled up in a prayer meeting where everyone is nice and catches to everybody, that is the anticipated outcome. But the text itself is about conflict resolution, isn't it? So then, then there's, an, there's a few offers in this text. And Jesus says, when he says to them, so when, when there is a point of fault between you and your brother. Some texts say that, eh? And your sister. So, so that is now not loving a stranger, eh? Eh? Loving a stranger is better. 
You, you have to pass by. You can greet them. You have, if, if, it's, if a neighbor, you can say nice things in the, in the driveway up until that neighbor does something that irritates you across the fence, and then it might change. But loving, loving a stranger is easy because it's a distant thing. But this text brings it home and says, when there is a fault between you and your sister, you and your brother, the first thing in the method is write about it on Facebook. Is it? I think, I didn't say, doesn't the Bible say that? I think there's something there. Maybe, maybe the first thing is if, if a colleague irritates you in an email, you know those work emails that are irritating? Don't respond to them alone. Respond to their reporting line and respond to all of the people around them and copy a thousand other people, eh? I think that's what the text says. Didn't the text say something like that? Shouldn't you respond so that, so that oh, don't even respond to them. Forward it to somebody else and say, can you believe it with an apostrophe? Or with a full kind of exclamation? Isn't it... Isn't that what the Bible says? No, 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 no. When someone sends you an irritating WhatsApp, forward it to your uncle or your sister or your aunt before you respond to them. That's what the Bible, isn't what the Bible says? And just say to them, can you believe what they've just said to me? I think, it's, I think it says something like that. Jesus says the first step, go and talk to them. Go talk to them. You see, um, I've been in many, many spaces. But let me just give you a scenario. Um, there are things that happen and then you you get to hear as a minister, um, when this is so and so did this to me. And then the expectation sometimes is that Mfundisi will pick up the phone and call so and so. Isn't it? And then Mfundisi asks the question, have you spoken to so and so? No, Mfundisi, I can't, I'm so angry. Or you have, a, you have a cousin, they do the same. You know, so and so has just done this to me. And the question Jesus asks and places at the heart of every human relationship, when it pertains the quality of your relation, relating with that person, go and speak to them. He doesn't say avoid them for a week, avoid them for a month, avoid them, block them, or close them off, or don't invite them to family gatherings. It, he doesn't say those things. Maybe later he does. Maybe he does, I'm not sure. But, uh, but at this stage he says the very first step in, 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 in reconciling relationships and in building positive relationships is to talk to the brother or sister. Eh? So when last did you allow yourself that courage of walking across the room and saying what you said was hurtful? In the spirit of love and reconciliation. Let me not belabor it. You said I have so many minutes, eh? That's enough. Number two. So the first thing, talk to them. Talk to them as a brother or a sister. Talk to them. And then says, try it a few times if it's possible. And then it says, if they don't listen. If they don't listen. Then, then you can then 
Gossip about them. Eh? Didn't the Bible say something like that? Then if they don't listen, then take. Take two other people to go and talk to them. Jesus understood the art of mediation before we did, eh? We, we did, he, did, he, didn't, he didn't need to take us to university to, to teach us about conflict resolution and mediation and, you know, psychological safety, all of these kind of big terminologies that, that you modern people use in, in trying to negotiate conflict and deal with conflict and, you know, conflict theories. Jesus says, if then the stuff fails between the two of you, the next level, bring two other people into the conversation. And then that is, that is to then create a sense in which there is enough conversational space for all the people involved to find resolution. Oftentimes they would say, try and bring people that you trust their wisdom for conversation. You know those people in your life cycle, whether it's a family setup, whether it's a work setup, but you know the people that when you invite them into a conversation, they will give a perspective and a clarity and a way of thinking and seeing things with you. I'm not so sure whether that is something that's possible with our relationships. And then the last thing Jesus says, I think this, this, this sounds like something that can escape, eh? So if they don't listen to you, and if they don't listen when you have taken two or three with you, so first, it is reconstructing the personal relationship. Two, it is finding friendships that can be constructive and building for the relationship. And then the third one is, then you can come and stand in front of the church and say, hey, brother so-and-so has hurt me. So you can report it to the church. Perhaps that's when you can then call them Fundis, hey, Fundis, we need help. But I, I remember one incident, and it didn't happen in Randbeck, okay? Um, you know that when you're in a committee and you decide something, and then somebody goes by themselves and then deals with the, with the situation you decided in the committee, and they do it in their own way. Or they take responsibility to do things that are probably not even what you decided. And they expect you just to accept, hey? It doesn't happen in Randbeck, it doesn't. And run back, they are Christians. <laughs> it's Blaise Pascal, I think, that said something like, one Christian is not a Christian. You understand that? That when you, when you are just by yourself, and your Christian values are never tested by anything else. And it is you and Jesus in a beautiful relationship. Christianity in its very nature, it's relational. And if your relationships have not been tested by the way of working through them and weaving the love of Christ into them, And there are people that at the first offense in church, they leave. You know, somebody commented about my dress as I was just getting out of church. They would rather leave the church than go to the person and say, actually, that comment was, was uncomfortable for me. I didn't like it. And leave it there. They would rather leave the church, jump two churches down the street and find a third church and go to that church. And again, the people of Randbeck don't do such things. 
they don't. So, what does this mean for you? Then Jesus says, if you've reported it to the church and the person doesn't listen to the church, Matthew writes this, treat them like a stranger and a tax collector. Isn't that a way out and say, now, now, Jesus gives me the permission to be rude, to not invite them to family functions, and to, and to ignore them and not to, and not to engage with them. Now, Jesus gives me the permission to just cast them out of the church and discommunicate them from church. Now, Jesus says, you have a right to do that. Isn't the right? That's, 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 that's exactly the Bible. Okay? Jesus, it's Jesus that said, when they don't listen to the church, then you can treat them as a tax collector and a stranger. At least Jesus gives us permission to treat people like strangers, eh? But, but do you notice that the person that's writing the text and saying, treat that person like a text collector is Matthew. Do you, do you notice that? So, so, so the text collector himself, the one that used to be a text collector, says, treat this person like a text collector. And almost like saying, Jesus is saying, treat them. Like Jesus treated me as a text collector. And how did Jesus treat the text collector? He finds him counting cents. He finds him robbing people. He finds him doing whatever the text collector was doing. And then Jesus says, Matthew, in you, in you, I see a disciple. In you, I see the power of God at work. In you, I see the possible next disciple. In you, I see the greatest preacher. In you, Matthew, I see a son of God. So just when we think we're off the hook, just when we think we're off the hook, Jesus says, not too soon. Because at the heart of it, it says, you are at least setting a boundary and saying to the person, somehow something has been broken, but I will love you up until we can find each other. I may have to love you differently, but I need to still love you. I will not change and become and Christ-like just because of that which brought us into this moment. I will continue to be Christ-like to you. And then that's when the text says, when two or three are gathered in my name, I am sure to be there. The prompt that is in the text, in that moment, both, both, the, the, the substance of what happens when people reconcile. Because when brothers and sisters, we have seen the art of reconciliation across the world. Those moments when people can then go beyond their pain and hug each other and say, this is my brother. That's the moment when Jesus comes alive. Then there's also the moment, that also, there's also in this the promise that if you never let go, There's the promise that when you do find it and find your way back to becoming, to, to coming together, then the promise comes alive. And then Romans, what, the, what does Romans say? Is the only way you can do that is when you clothe yourself with Christ. Because we can't do it by ourselves. We need the power and the presence of God to empower us enough to do that. And then Romans ends off as I end. When you've done everything, oh, oh, nothing to anybody except the depth, the debt of continuing love. Can you put it in context now? Whatever step you are on in the process of trying to reconcile, 
owe nothing to that person except a loving posture and a loving presence that will heal and restore and give life and open the possibility that when two, one or two or three are gathered in my name, I am sure to be there. And at the heart of our reconciliation is the one that displayed it with his life. The one that invites us to this table. The one on which on the night he was betrayed by his brothers and sisters. His brothers. Not the sisters actually. It is the brothers that betrayed him. He washed his, their feet and invited them to the table. Oh, no one anything except the debt of love. When two or three are gathered in my name, reconciling, forming relationships, recreating, renewing relationships, I'm sure to be there. In the name of Christ and for his sake, amen. Not too bad. There's still a few minutes. Come, let us pray. <clears throat> Sometimes your invitation of God is may sound so simple, but as we listen, it touches the deepest parts of our lives. Thank you for the gift of your reconciling love. Thank you for the gift of your presence that renews and restores and offers an opportunity for newness. For where conflict has festered, for where pain has been damaging, where estrangement has become the currency, you are the key and the spirit and the love that reconciles. I pray that you build our community, build our families, and build our world with the power of your reconciling love. In the strong and powerful name of Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. So we come around to celebrate at the table of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. So I invite the stewards on duty to please join us. Can you please stand and share the peace with those around you? Arts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to you. you may be seated. God, all powerful and ever living God, it is indeed right, our joy and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You created all things and made us in your own image. And when we had fallen into sin, you gave your only son to be our savior. He shared our human nature and died on the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand in glory, where he lives forever to pray for us. Through him, you have sent your holy and life-giving spirit and made us, your people, a royal priesthood to stand before you and to proclaim your glory and celebrate your mighty acts. 
And so with all the company of heaven, we joined in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, Lord God, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night on which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, God, as he has commanded us, we do this in remembrance of him, and we ask that you accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Christ. Make us one body with him. Accept us as we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice and bring us with the whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be given to you, Almighty Father, from all who dwell on earth and in heaven and throughout all ages. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one love. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy, and not in the goodness of our own. We are not even together the crumbs under your table. But it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, so that we may ever live in him and he in us. Receive and you have great flesh. Amen. Amen. The table of God for God's holy people. Come to this table. You who have come so often and you who hasn't come so often. You who feel worthy and you who feel unworthy. All of us are invited by the love of the one who has called us to offer the gift of love to everyone. Come, the things of God for God's holy people are ready. Come. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly power. Prepare for all people. Amen. As usual, you are invited to contribute towards um, the poor fund um, offering. That is the way that we take our reconciling love and share it with the world to love the neighbor. So the stewards will wait on us as we come to that moment. So we have come to the end of our time together this morning, Pastor Tim. And so we are now going to take our last hymn as we conclude the service. of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.